Thank you. 
everyone. We begin our service with two symbolic actions. The first thing I do is to put a copy of the scriptures on the coffin. We remember that Walter cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. We put a cross. In baptism, Walter received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. We begin, as we always come into the presence of God, by calling to mind our faults and failings and ask him for his forgiveness. You'll find the penitential act on the funeral cards. And we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Walter, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you please sit down? <clears throat> the first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. We join in the response to the psalm. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I re our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. For Israel's law it is there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. For the peace of Jerusalem pray, peace be to your homes. May peace reign in your walls, in your palaces, peace. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. For love of my brethren and friends, I say peace upon you. For love of the house of the Lord, I will ask for your good. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. 
The second reading is from the first letter of St Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. Please stand. We say together the Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please sit down. I must first apologise that it's not Father Andrew who is here conducting this afternoon service, and I know he's really sorry not to be here. He told me how Jenny and Walter had welcomed him to their home, how much he'd been pleased to be involved in the planning for the wedding, but as you may have heard, his own mother died tragically on Sunday, so he's had to go to join his family up in Dorset. It was when I first came to this church some three years ago now that I used to enjoy visiting Walter, hearing the fascinating tales of his days in the force, Sadly, along came COVID and then the lockdowns and then my own retirement, so I hadn't seen him recently. When I took over the funeral service, I was pleased to see that the gospel that had been chosen was that one from St. God, St. John. I expect you all remember it from another funeral that we all watched on the TV recently, where that same gospel was read in Westminster Abbey. And it's often read at funerals. It was read at my own parents' funerals because it has such an important message for us. In that reading, we heard Jesus speaking to his friends. Like all the people that Walter will have known during his lifetime, they would have come from a variety of different backgrounds. Some of them were fishermen. Some of them we know were civil servants. Some were labourers. Others were traders. But they all had one thing in common. They were all anxious about what was going to happen to them when they died. Which is why Jesus made that speech, to reassure them, to take away those fears. And what was true for those first disciples, I think, is also true for many of us today. Regardless of our background or occupation, we all know that there is nothing more certain in this life than that just as we were born into the world so one day we're going to have to leave it we don't know when that time will come but it may be many years from now it could be tomorrow that bit we don't know but especially when now we're 
confronted by the coffin of a friend or a relative, we are inevitably reminded that that day will come for us. And it can make us just as anxious as it made those first followers of Jesus in the Gospel reading we heard. But if we let it, it will take away our fears just as it did theirs. Because I always think we're most frightened by the unknown. If the makers of horror movies really want to scare us, then they keep the terror in the shadows so that we can't see it properly. What is around that corner? What is behind <coughs> the mirror? Once we see it, once we can face it, it loses a lot of its scariness. And it's the same with death. If we don't know what's waiting for us, then it can be really frightening. Once we do know what's there, then we can lose a lot of our fear. And that reading tells us exactly what we have to look forward to, that there is a room for us in our Father's house, that where Jesus went after he died, there we have a home waiting for us as well. And we know that after his death, Jesus went to be with his Father in heaven. And so we can be assured that we have a home waiting there for us as well. But of course, losing our own fear of death in no way takes away the sadness of the loss which you feel for someone who was important in your life. That's very natural. Every parting from someone we love is bound to be sad. Wasn't it the late Queen herself who said, sadness is the price we pay for having loved someone? If we enjoyed their company during their life, then we're bound to miss them when they've gone. But we can't really be sorry that someone we care about so deeply is now in a better place. Free from all the worries and the cares of this life, and, and I speak from experience here, free from all those aches and pains that come to all of us with advancing years. You will all have very different memories of Walter Hayes. And today I want to encourage you to share those memories with one another, to thank God for all that Walter meant to you, and to look forward to that day when you will once again share his company, just as even now he goes to join all those relatives, neighbours and friends that he loved and who are now waiting to welcome him as he makes his way to his eternal home, that room that has his name on it. Please stand for the prayer. The response to the Lord in your mercy is <coughs> our prayer. So let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant Walter may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be pleased to admit forever into the company of the saints your deceased servant Walter, who once through baptism received the seed of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On the last day, be pleased to raise up Walter, who fed on the body of Christ, the bread of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to the souls of all our brothers and sisters, friends and benefactors, the rewards of their debts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Yeah. welcome into the light of your face all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Yeah. be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And show your mercy to the needy, the sick, and the dying. Strengthen them with hope 
and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And may we be strengthened in our faith to live the rest of our lives in following your Son and be ready when you shall call us to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we commend our dearly loved brother Walter and all those who have died to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please sit down? So we listen to the hymn on evil <coughs>
can I ask for an indication of how many people will be receiving communion, please? We just put a hand up. I know I consecrate enough, but not too much. Thank you. That's uh, very helpful. <coughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Walter, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will, to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, our patron, 
and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray O lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis our pope the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you in your compassion O merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world remember your servant walter whom you've called from this world to yourself grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their parting from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes for seeing you our god as you are we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through christ our lord to whom you bestow on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him our <coughs> god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant <coughs> peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. As people receive communion, so we sit to listen to the communion hymn. 
which is I under the area of life. strengthened by it, our brother Walter may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please sit down. Now we have the eulogy.
It's wonderful to see so many people here. It's really wonderful and heartwarming. Walter Hayes. Walter, Wally, Waldo, Wal, Wawa. Someone larger than life in so many ways. Walter spoke often of growing up in High Street with Brian, Jack, Tom, Jerry, Irene and Anne, under the love and watchful eye of Maggie and James. The brothers and sisters got up to many escapades and had much cheerfulness and laughter in the face of difficult times. He was often Mitch in school and he said some of his best school days were spent picking apples and gardening for the Christian brothers. He spoke of almost getting run over, helping to teach Anne to drive, racing carts down High Street with Jerry and covering up for Tom when some annoyed army folk turned up in a half-track looking for their unfinished furniture. Sometimes one of the brothers would skip mass, but they would make sure that uh, one of them went so they knew what the priest had said, because Maggie would test them with dire consequences if they didn't know. Bonds of great love were formed. Walter served for many years in the Irish army, and he rose to sergeant and became Irish army boxing champion, testifying to his fitness and determination. He served in Gormanston, uh, the Curragh, and Castle Blaney, and made many good friends who have kept in touch until now. I remember him speaking about uh, Mrs. McVale, whose son was a, a Belfast gunman. She travelled from Belfast to visit him, but uh, there had been a disturbance in the prison, uh, and she wasn't allowed in. But against the rules, he took her letter and looked after her for the afternoon, and she was able to hear the inmates singing beautiful Irish songs, and her son later thanked him for that. He told it on the border during the Troubles in 1969, they were assembled on the parade ground and told they would be going into the north the following day, and some of them would not be coming back. He faced tests that we should be grateful that we don't have to, and he didn't flinch in the face of danger. He was also very sociable and quick-witted, or acute as he would say, and could tell a seemingly limitless number of stories like no one else could. He described one situation in the barracks where they were installing a grill to come down over the bar at closing time, and there was a series of ornamental initials being cut out and welded into the grill. One of them was an O. Uh, when it was being installed, he asked the fitter to enlarge the O very slightly so that a pint glass would fit through it. <laughs> uh, he was then the favourite of the officers as he could manage extended lock-ins while claiming the bar was closed and also benefit from, from some nice tips as a result. For his extraordinary service in the army, he was discharged with an exemplary record, something very rare indeed. Walter married Rita and was a proud father of John, Geraldine, Irene and Monica who went to her rest before him. He was a proud grandfather too and often spoke of his children and grandchildren and was especially close to his son John. His work in the army meant he did not see as much of them as I'm sure he would have wanted. He came over to Cornwall in the, in the 1980s and the bond grew between himself and Jenny and they became partners for the last 39 years and were getting ready to be married if the cancer hadn't taken him so quickly. I remember many good times with Walter playing ultimate badminton on the back grass with him leaping, leaping around like a large gazelle um, in making potato dumplings, doing a lot of DIY with six-inch nails, and us celebrating the birth of Kaylee uh, with much food and wine. And I can't tell you how we got home that night, because uh, it would be uh, incriminating. Um, he built up his own company, Loctite Security Services, and it was very successful, and employed 30 to 40 people at one time. Great tales of fixing floods at the landfill site, seeing ghosts at the quarries, and encountering all sorts of characters, sometimes with his nightstick, as he called it. But unfortunately, um, his main client decided not to pay for some time and the company went into bankruptcy. And he began to have serious trouble with his hips at that time too, and his mobility and chronic pain, which would affect him more and more for the rest of his life. It was a great disappointment that he wasn't able to get his hips replaced, and especially thinking about what a great dancer he was in his youth. He had his share of difficulties to face, but was always ready to respond with a joke and a hearty laugh. And despite coming and going in a wheelchair, he got up on his feet to dance at Kaylee's wedding with so many of us just a few years ago. The fighter in him lasted to the end, as he spoke with delirium from his hospital bed. He whispered to me, Sean, I'm going to make a break for it in a few days, to the countryside. He said he had to take care because he'd seen four soldiers who were against him. He was sure he could take two of them himself, but he might need help with the other two. <laughs> well, he wasn't always sure what was going on, he always kept his faith, and he held his wooden cross under his pillow while he slept in hospital, and wouldn't let it out of his sight. When the priest gave him the sacrament of the sick in hospital, the priest gave him a quarter of the host of the wafer, because he didn't know if Walter could manage any more than that. Walter gave him a look, and I'm sure we can all picture that look, and said, <coughs> Is that all I'm getting? <laughs> My mum Jenny argued strongly for him to come home from hospital, and when he finally did get home, he passed away quickly and peacefully. 
Some of his last words were, I'm at home with my gym. Walter was not perfect, and none of us is. And that is why we need our Lord's forgiveness, which is freely offered. Walter was someone who was capable of enormous love, generosity, courage and commitment to those he cared for. He welcomed strangers with open arms and brought out laughter in the face of hardship. Let us treasure our own families now and remember Walter in the best of times, because in the next life there will be nothing but the best of times. God bless you, Walter. So we move to the final part of our service, the final commendation. You'll find that on the back of the uh, service cover. And so with faith in Jesus Christ, we must reverently bury the body of our brother. We pray with confidence to God in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother and command his soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment, deliverance from death and pardon of sin. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry him home to be at peace with the Father. May he rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. And as we began our service with a number of symbolic actions, so we close them. I remove the cross, sign of baptism, and the scriptures which we said ought to live his life under. And I sprinkle his body once again with holy water. We keep referring back to baptism because it's at our <coughs> baptisms that we were made children of God and it's as children of God that we look forward to a heavenly inheritance. And so baptism is really important and we always recall that at this time. And I honour his body with incense. Two symbols. <clears throat> During the Mass, on the Sunday, the people will be incensed and the priest as a sign of honour. And so we treat Walter's body with that same honour. It's also talked about in the Bible as a sign of our prayers going up to heaven. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother Walter. In the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day, we give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May saints and angels lead you on, escorting you where Christ has gone. Now he has called you, come to him who sits above the seraphim. Come to the peace of Abraham and to the supper of the Lamb. Come to the glory of the blessed and to perpetual life and rest. So in peace, let us take Walter to his place of rest. And as we do so, we listen to the final hymn, <coughs> O Lord my God.